Hi friends, today I am giving a example problem on inference rules. Okay, in the previous video we have already solved 5 example problems on inference rules. Please refer that problems for better understanding. Now in this video we have to solve another example problem. Okay, so prove the implication for all x p of x conditional q of x for all x r of x conditional negation q of x implies for all x r of x conditional negation p of x so these are the two given premises from that two given premises we have to derive this conclusion once we are deriving this conclusion okay we can say that this conclusion is derived from the given premises. Otherwise, this conclusion is not derived from this given premises. Okay, we have to check whether this conclusion uh, logically follows from this given premises or not. Okay. So, this one. Uh, now, the given premises are the given premises first one for all x p of x conditional q of x this is the first premise next for all x r of x conditional negation q of x this is the second premise Okay, and the conclusion is, conclusion is this premise for all x, r of x, conditional negation, p of x. This is the conclusion. Okay, so now we have to derive that this conclusion is logically follows from these given premises or not. Okay. I am taking the first premise. This is the first premise. This first premise is introduced into the derivation as a first step using a rule P. So this is for all x, P of x conditional Q of x. Okay. So first of all, we have to apply any implication formula for that one first of all uh, we have to eliminate the universal quantifier first okay after eliminating the universal quantifier we have to apply any implication formula okay to eliminate the universal quantifier we are using a rule us universal specification on which step that is the first step after eliminating the universal quantifier, we are getting P of X conditional Q of X, but variable name is also changed after eliminating the universal quantifier. It can be written as P of A conditional Q of A. This is the new step, that is the second step. So the second step can be obtained from the first step. Okay, P of A conditional Q of A. Next. Next, this premise is introduced into the derivation using rule P. So, by using rule P, this premise is introduced for all x. So, R of x conditional negation of Q of x. So, this is after second step. This is the third step. Third step in the derivation. Okay. Here also, eliminating the universal quantifier and change the variable name. For eliminating the universal quantifier, we are using rule US, universal specification applied on third step. Okay, so then we are getting, after eliminating universal quantifier, change the variable name. Q of A, here negation is there. So this is uh, on the same step. We have some modifying the other step, then new step we are getting. Okay. R of A conditional negation Q of A. Okay. So here from that 
two steps, second step and fourth step, any formula we are getting? No. Now apply the contrapositive step on this, uh, this one. So now apply the contrapositive step here. Rule T applied on which step? That is the fourth step. And E18. What is E18? It is P conditional Q implies or logically equivalent to negation Q conditional negation P. Okay. Here in the place of P or of A is there. In the place of Q, negation Q of A is there. It is logically equivalent to negation Q. Negation Q means negation of negation Q of A. Conditional negation of P is nothing but negation of R of A. Okay. So this is the contrapositive step. This is the logical equivalence formula E18. Okay. So then what we are getting? Negation of negation of Q of A is nothing but Q of A conditional negation R of A. Okay. So now by observing this step and this step, second step and fifth step, P of A conditional Q of A, Q of A conditional negation R of A. Okay. So what we are getting according to the by combining this step and this step. So one step and third step by combining one comma three. That is the next step in the derivation. So here rule T applied on which step? Second step and fifth step. Second and fifth step. And which implication rule we are using? I13. I13 is P conditional Q. Q conditional R implies P conditional R. This is the formula we are using. So here P means, here P means P of A. Here Q means Q of A. Here Q means Q of A. Here R means negation R of A. Implies P. P is nothing but P of A. Conditional R is nothing but negation R of A. Negation R of A we are getting. Okay. So now, so apply again control positive step on this one. Okay. So on the same step, we are applying contra positive step. We are getting new step into the derivation. This one. So rule T applied on which step? That is the sixth step and E18. So what is E18? It is already there. P conditional Q is logically equivalent to negation Q conditional negation P. Okay. So this is P. In the place of P, P of A is there. In the place of Q, negation R of A is there. So what we are getting? Negation of negation Q. Negation of negation R of A. Conditional negation P of A. Negation P of A. We are getting. Okay. And the here, same step 1 comma 3. That is H. So... Uh, rule T applied and which step? That is the seventh step. Double negation law. Double negation law. This is the I1. Double negation law is nothing but huh, double negation law is nothing but E1. Okay. This is E1. Not I1. Sorry. E1. Okay. So we are getting negation of negation uh, R of A I is nothing but R of A conditional negation P of A. Okay. Now we have, we are already getting the uh, conclusion. Now we have to prefix the universal quantifier for that one. So here on the same step 1 comma 3, that is the next step in the derivation, ninth step. For prefixing the universal quantifier, rule UG is used on the what step? That is the eighth step. So that is for all x, change the variable name R of x conditional negation P of x. Okay. Check that one whether the conclusion is uh, uh, getting or not. So for all x, R of x conditional negation P of x. 
so therefore it is a valid conclusion it is a valid conclusion okay so the conclusion derived from the given premises the conclusion is derived from the given premises from the given premises okay so in this way we have to solve the given problem so thank you thank you for watching this video if you like this video please share this video to your friends and classmates if you like this video please subscribe my channel so the well srinivas rao thank you